Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another Ford Ranger electric update. So I'm doing a few updates on the Ford Ranger electric here, the uh, NIM uh, battery pack, one the white one, and uh, one of the last few sort of truck specific um, upgrades or changes that I need to do is actually replacing the stock the the shocks so this still came with the stock shocks which are 20 years old and uh, I've already replaced the rear ones um, you, you know it took me about a day to do so I really just have to finish the front uh, shocks now um, it, you know it, it it helps to have a little bit of uh, helping hands or whatever but this is actually a job that you can kind of do uh, just one person and uh, yeah so I've been working my way through it and it, it you know I took a pause weather related and things like that just to you know other priorities always seem to come up but yeah I've had the truck sort of lifted off the ground uh, for a while longer than I wanted it to be so I just want to go ahead and get the the front shocks uh, finished putting in um, and uh, and then I'll just drop the truck down onto the ground and like I said just a few other things that I need to work on uh, before I actually prep it to put the battery in and and I'll walk through that whole process through as uh, too as it happens uh, but I wanted to talk about the shocks a little bit anyway uh, I mean in this case there there's some just basic stuff like the the shocks that uh, Ford actually used uh, in the rear uh, it turns out that these are these are sort of weird shocks because they're not normal to the Ranger. Um, they're actually out of a um, motorhome, I believe. So anyway, it, they're they're not the and these of course aren't the aren't the greatest. Um, I guess that they're they're the Motorcraft, but XL fifty eight. Um, but uh, yeah, they're definitely uh, <laughs> not a. Uh, not working the way they should so I, I ended up replacing them with a uh, Bilstein's uh, some heavy-duty uh, shocks they are actually the same ones that uh, uh, someone else had replaced on the red Ford Ranger the uh, lead acid Ford Ranger uh, and these are heavy-duty shocks they and, and it makes sense you know the Ford uh, Ranger is a light compact midsize I guess truck but uh, it, it, you're carrying around a ton of batteries so you need to have some heavy duty um, shocks to, to absorb that. And so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, replace it with these Bilsteins. Like I said, I have the front ones to do. Uh, but one concept that I wanted to talk about uh, that's very unique to electric vehicles, and I feel like it's low hanging fruit, there's an opportunity there uh, that no one has exploited to date. And, uh, and that is, you know, anytime you have motion, there's the opportunity to scavenge energy. And a company, and uh, they had uh, electric generating shocks, apparently. And like I said, anytime you have motion, there's an opportunity to scavenge energy. Uh, so some of them use hydraulics, some of them can use just pure electric. And one company, and I'll put a link in it below, I don't think the company is around anymore, uh, but they uh, had, created a shock that was able to generate energy and they said that on a 3,000 pound car they were able to generate 1.5 kilowatts or kilowatt hours now I say kilowatts because they didn't give a period of time and so if you're talking about an, a unit of energy it would be kilowatt hours uh, but I can only assume that maybe they're talking about over the course of an hour but just to put that into perspective, right, because 1.5 kilowatts might not seem like a lot, but if you're in a car that, say, a, a 3,000 pound sedan, the equivalent uh, electric vehicle, the closest would be something like a Tesla Model 3, right? Uh, but a 3,000 pound uh, sedan in an electric form, you're going to get a minimum of about four miles per kilowatt hour. Uh, at 60 miles an hour. So if you're generating 1.5 kilowatts just driving down the road, well, that's a, basically a 10% reduction in consumption or a 10% improvement in efficiency. And that's, you know, again, 3,000 pound sedan, electric vehicles tend to be more uh, heavier. Uh, you know, they tend to be a, a little bit on the, on the, on the, 
thicker side of things. They tend to be a little bit heavier, uh, carry a lot more weight. And so if you have a shock absorber system that's able to feed power and energy back into the system, you're looking at probably 10 to 15 percent improvement in efficiency. Now, the reason they haven't really pursued it up to this point is it's not really effective for gas cars. But again, gas cars don't necessarily have all of the, the strengths and capabilities that electric cars have. And this is something that I would really like to see automakers pursue. I, I know People keep saying Tesla is so innovative and they do their first principles. Well, why haven't they done this already? Uh, this, is, this is something that would be very easy to do um, and integrate into a system for a tech savvy company, right? Whether it's GM, whether it's uh, Tesla, Lucid, Rivian, any of these companies, Ford, right? I'm in a Ford Ranger electric right now um, to integrate these electric generating shocks into their EVs, offset some of the energy, uh, you know, from all of the bumping and oscillating that you're doing as you're driving down the road, convert that into usable electricity, um, like I said, enough to, to maybe improve fuel economy by 10, 15 percent. Uh, it's, it's something that's available to electric uh, cars and they haven't used it yet. So uh, that's a little bit disappointing. Um, but anyway, like I said, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, finish uh, installing the front shocks and hopefully get this truck down, off lifted, level on the ground so I can work on a few other things that I need to work on on the truck. Uh, before I start bringing the uh, the battery case over and getting ready to load it in. So let's get to work. All right, well, I hope that was helpful. I hope it was an interesting and informative. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, you know, have you replaced your own shocks before? Do you do this kind of work on your own vehicles? Uh, I'd love to hear what you think about the idea of electric vehicle and electric vehicle automakers, um, you know, starting to use shocks as an alternate way of, uh, you know, generating power and offsetting, uh, um, you know, consumption as you're driving. I mean, do you think this is something that some of the major automakers need to pursue uh, and integrate into their electric vehicle platforms? If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and thank you for watching.